Hello friends, this is a continuation video of practice project 2 that is incremental loading of Excel files into SQL Server data. So let's continue to the package design from where we left in the last package design. Go to slowly changing dimension configuration by double click on that, click next. Now select your table name here now. So finance data. So here it shows all the fields that we have in the source and destination. So we have to choose our business key here. Business key means the lookup column, the unique lookup column between source and destination. So we know ID is the unique column that we identified, right? So we identified ID as the unique column based on our initial source file analysis. So let's mark it as business key. So we have done with the business key mapping. So let's go next. Now here we have to specify our fixed attributes, changing attribute and historical attributes. So based on our analysis, we, we found these columns as changing attributes. These columns are historical attributes and these columns are fixed attributes right so let's configure this here so for fixed attributes or for changing attributes let's select changing attributes cogs or changing attribute or let's select in this order to avoid confusion Unit sold, manufacturing, price, sales price, gross sales, sales, and then COGS, and change this to changing attributes. changing attributes and then go to historical attributes discount band historical attribute and discounts historical attribute and then fix it fix it all these are fixed right so segment fix it country fix it product fixed, date fixed, month name fixed, month number fixed, profit fixed, not profit is not fixed, profit is here right, so let's change that to a changing attribute and then year fixed. So these are the ones we identified and we configured here. Next, now Fixed attributes fail the transformation if changes are detected in a fixed attribute. So based on our manager suggestions, we we shouldn't change anything, right? Don't change, but record all the exceptions. We have to record all the exceptions. We we shouldn't fail our package, but we have to record all these exceptions if we receive any changes in the fixed attribute. So to do that, just uncheck this box. So we don't want to fail the package if we detect any fixed attributes, but we want to store that information as well in another exceptions file. And changing attributes change all the matching records, including outdated records when changes are detected in a changing attribute. No, I don't want to change all the matching records. I just want to change the only changing column record, right? So I don't want to check this box as well. I don't want to check. Now click next. Here historical attributes. So like I said, it shows two types of configuration. One is use a single column to show current and expired records. So it marks as current and current and true. For expiration, it is it shows it, it logs expired. So I want to use start date and end date 
to indicate that start date and expiry date okay usually the normal normally we use the start date and end date but some cases we can also use this one but usually we use this because uh, in order to track when it was started and when it was ended for that information to identify the date time for each record change we use this if you don't want that information you can select this and you can have a column instead of this start date and end date you can you can have another column to maintain this information like so that's why we created start date and end date at the beginning okay and we and we're able to set date values here you can choose whatever you want so i am choosing creation date now click next now enable inform member support yes click next finish so it creates all the necessary transformations automatically so this slowly changing dimension is like a dll so it it has that engine to differentiate the source and destination lookup and output into different categories like the inserts the historical attribute into one output and new output into one flow and like that it differentiate this dll automatically identify the changes based on our configuration and it gives the output flow for our destination insertion so this is how it creates okay so let's uh, redesign if you want you can adjust this like this in order to fit those in the designer let's try to understand a bit more about these transformations so why it has created these transformations so if you go open derived column so you see the date type conversion is here so as we discussed ssis date format is different with the sql server date format that's why there is a data conversion type casting between the system creation date and the sql server compatible date because it has date time it is com converting it as date time format so all these derived columns are related to that and if you open oledb command go to component properties then you see sql command here now when you click on ellipses you will see the update command here so the all the question marks are parameter mapping because it is a oledb connection it uses question marks for parameter mapping if it is adv.net mapping then it 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 use at the rate parameter name okay there is the difference between oledb connection parameter mapping and adv parameter mapping so here because it is using oledb it is using question mark as parameter mapping and this is how it generated so because based on the configuration that we set in the slowly changing dimension id is the unique column right so that's why it is using id as where condition to identify that record in the destination table first so this question mark is coming from the source file for each record in the source file it replaces id here and it gets the data and it updates the data based on the other columns data in the source okay so you can have a look in your editor more about this to understand more about this okay so all these oled b commands doing updates based on the changing criteria and this insert dimension destination is inserting the records whether a new or historical also needs to maintain historical data like new data right so that new and the historical changes we see this new output updating inserting records now let's try to execute our package so total 691 records are loaded and all are related to new output because we are loading this file for first time 
we don't have any records in the destination table right so that's how that's why uh, it's loaded 691 records into destination table so there are no outputs in the other streams now stop this package and go to table and verify so you see all the records in your table with start date so this is automatically generating inst um, not coming from the source but SIS is generating that is slowly changing dimension is generating the start date let's take a small break here and please watch next video for continuation on this please comment if you have any questions and like share subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thank you